Solenoids. A solenoid is a long wire wound in the form of a helix. So basically, this is in the form of a helix, as you can see here. The net magnetic field is the vector sum of the fields result resulting from all the turns. So if you consider the current uh, basically flowing uh, into the uh, wire here, so it's flowing out and in, and then it comes, uh, it flows in and out and in uh, like this. So for all of these current loops, if we consider using the right hand rule, what is the direction of the magnetic field? Now the current is coming out and going in like this. So four fingers of the right hand curl in the direction of the current. The magnetic field lines are pointing uh, up like this inside the solenoid and outside basically you can concentrate on a small region in the current carrying wire you can see that this perpendicular uh, current will create small loops of magnetic field outside and uh, basically uh, in the interior we get a more or less uniform magnetic field outside uh, it looks like uh, we are getting something that uh, looks like a bar magnet with which has a north pole and the south pole so it comes from the north pole towards the south pole like this so one end of the solenoid behaves like a north pole here the other end acts like a south pole so the magnetic field lines resemble those of a bar magnet meaning that the solenoid effectively has a north pole and south pole and you can see the field lines diverge as we go to the uh, edge of the solenoid and uh, outside basically they close and uh, when we go really far away um, the closing distance gets really large which means the magnetic field is decreasing as the length of the solenoid increases the interior field becomes more uniform you can see that we have a source of non-uniformity if this is too small if this becomes too small then we have very non-uniform field if this becomes very long then we will have a more or less uniform field outside and the exterior field when this becomes very long becomes uh, weaker and uh, weaker okay so outside the field lines diverge like this now uh, we can use ampere's law when ampere's law is applied to the rectangular dashed path here so if we take a rectangular path here we can calculate the total current enclosed by this path and write ampere's law uh, and we can also consider another loop that's loop one that is applied to the circular path whose plane is perpendicular to the page uh, and you can see that the the current that uh, has a perpendicular component to this loop will be rather small and therefore the magnetic field will be weak. So along path AB and CD, either the field lines are approximately perpendicular to the DS vector or they partially cancel. You can see that uh, here we have the field lines here. So this one uh, is basically going in this direction this one going in this direction we have a partial cancellation in between and also they are uh, almost perpendicular to this path so the field lines are perpendicular to a path that I take here so for a B and C D uh, the field uh, is negligibly small so if I consider a D a let's consider a D B dot DS along AD will be equal to B times L. Why? Because we have this uh, linear path for the magnetic field. All of these components add up, give, giving us this linear uh, magnetic field, which is pointing up. So that's B times L, which is equal to mu zero times uh, current enclosed. Why is that? Because the closed path integral B dot ds has a component on AD, has a component on uh, DC, CB and BA. Now for the reason uh, I have considered here for AB and CD 
we have uh, b perpendicular to uh, the um, the field lines are perpendicular to ds so b is perpendicular to ds here and here so therefore these two are zero and along cb because we're outside the wire the field lines are rather weak you can see that uh, when we go outside uh, we have to follow this uh, path and the field lines are getting weaker and weaker. So here we have a negligible uh, contribution. Therefore, the closed path integral gives us this, uh, the integral along AD, which is mu0 times current enclosed, which is mu0 times the number of turns in that portion of the uh, solenoid multiplied with I. Now, what is n? The number of turns in the length L. Okay, so then we can see that the magnetic field inside B in will be equal to uh, mu zero and I over L, which is uh, mu zero and i, where n is lowercase n here, which is basically the number of turns, capital N per unit length, L. So that basically tells us what the magnetic field inside the solenoid is. All right. And uh, so we talked about the solenoid, which is a helical uh, wire that is a wire that is wrapped in the form of a helix and the longer this wire we have a more uniform magnetic field inside and a less uh, and a weaker magnetic field outside if you look at the current loops that create this helix we can see uh, at the uh, when we are close to the uh, end of the solenoid uh, we have a north pole and south pole and close to the edges we have these circular loops so these circular loops adapt to give us this uniform field inside and the, in the exterior we have a very weak magnetic field and it basically resembles the structure of a bar magnet now when we take two amperian loops for example if you consider a uh, loop one here because the perpendicular current component through this loop one is uh, zero this suggests that the magnetic field outside should be uh, close to zero and when we consider this loop two here uh, in this case we have uh, a b and c d paths are perpendicular to the magnetic field you can see the magnetic field lines are uh, perpendicular to this path uh, most of the time so we can uh, neglect the contribution here and for C BC uh, we have uh, the magnetic field lines very weak because we're going uh, outside and the north and south poles are in the in the limit they're infinitely far away they, these field lines will never meet so uh, for for this part we have negligible contribution therefore this close path integral uh, b dot ds is b times l where L is the length of this, uh, the distance between AD, uh, points A and D, mu zero times current enclosed, which is the number of turns inside uh, going through this loop multiplied with I. So mu zero and I divided by capital N I divided by it L, the length will give us mu zero number of turns per unit length times I as the magnetic field inside the solenoid so once again the magnetic field outside is very weak uh, and um, when when you consider uh, in between what is going on here between these two you can see that we you have partial cancellation because the field is going like this on one side and this on the other side they cancel exactly in the middle so you have no field here and also these field lines are perpendicular to the to a current loop that we consider uh, in this section and therefore has negligible contribution okay so uh, the magnetic field due to a solenoid is basically inside the solenoid is uniform and it gets better in uniformity as the length of the solenoid increases and it is equal to permeability of free space times number of 
turns by unit length times the current i.